how to set your priority right that is the problem with many people because of which they falter with time management do you want to know how to prioritize your uh, tasks this is some geeta leadership growth mentor and i am on a 5 day time management challenge for the benefit of all of you so how do you prioritize yesterday i was speaking to a lady who who wants to prioritize and she wanted to spend some time for her health right so very fairly enough um, reason why he wanted to be into my time management challenge so how much do you think your uh, time management worth you it will save you a lot of uh, lot of uh, reputational risk lot of uh, emotional risk and self worth risk also do you agree with that so if that is so you have a strong reason why you should invest in yourself in managing your time if you don't know you need to know how to do that see there is one simple reason why i am asking you to join my course is because you if you could do you could have done already don't you think so and because you are not able to do that is why you are here watching this time management challenge so that you can get a clue i'll try to give you a clue right honestly don't you know how to manage your time or is it your helplessness in managing time which is why you are not able to why you are not able to manage time which one of this is true right so so how to prioritize right what is your idea in the morning you wake up around 7 between 7 to 9 if you are a person troubled with time management then i assume that you wake up around 7:30 to 8 at the earliest right and then you have got say 1 to 1 and 1/2 hours of time to do your morning routine complete finish that thing like me i have got to cook clean my house my all my household work gets finished in the morning so how much time do i have in the morning routine i have to cook i have to clean my household and i have to wash my clothes that those are the three things that i have in the morning and in the morning also i have i have to store water for the day so i have to be careful that i i am i am awake by 6 pm 6 am so that uh, i can i don't falter with the water supply so that is what i do so 6 to 9 there is water supply so i uh, whatever time i have and it takes me say 1 hour to reach my office so my office starts at 9:30 so by 8:30 i should be off from my home and uh, by 7:30 i should start cooking so that uh, i can finish uh, finish up by 8:15 8:15 to 8:30 i need time to get ready uh what do you say is it a fair time to get ready so yes uh 
once I'm done, uh, once I'm done, just a second, right? Are you people able to see me? I don't know whether I'm visible here or not. I don't know if anybody is there. Uh, well, hi, Sujit. Can you see me, Sujit? Can you tell in the chat whether you are able to see me or not? Because my screen is blank. Can you see? Can you say, Sujit? Hi. Are you there? So let me assume that you are uh, here listening to uh, listening to my voice. Yeah, now I'm there. Sorry about the camera. It is some time. It is not uh, working. So I am not in a high resolution mode, high definition. Let me try if it works. Manageable, right? Let me try another thing. Full high definition. So it is not available. So let me make with this. So now to prioritize there is one rule which is called 80-20 Pareto rule. What you have to do is all those things that you do in a day 20% of the task will bring 80% of your result. Please listen to it very carefully. 20% of your task will bring 80% of your result. So if that is so, then choose those tasks which will bring 80% of result. So if you are, so that is ideally three tasks in a day. So you have to identify plan accordingly so that you you don't have more than three tasks in your to-do list any day, any given day. You understood, right? So the first trick is to identify those tasks which will contribute to 80% of your results. So if you can know that, you have to indulge in those tasks only. And 20% means, so if you have 10 tasks, then you should not ideally have more than 10 tasks in your to-do list for the day. Because you won't have time for those 10 tasks. You have to rush. So you should not have to rush. You should not rush for any task. Otherwise, there will be mistakes. Right? So, be slow on the execution part. Slow but timely. Stick to your time. That is the first thing that I would request you to do. And the second thing is... Identify those three tasks in a day which will contribute to 80% of your result. Can you do that? Right? So if you can do that, that is fine. Otherwise, 
we can uh, resolve that in a separate class right so first thing you do that then select those three tasks and get going that is the first thing the second thing is how big is your to do list i should have asked this question first so many people have a to do list of 40 things now what are those 40 things those are very small things like updating your calendar like putting ink in your pen uh finding out time to go buy something for your lunch taking stroll in the office for some time after lunch all these kind of things are there and there is also the, if you are if you are a meditation freak then you are uh, going to meditate for five times that is also written in the to do list why i say those should not be in the to do list is because those should be part of your life it should be automate automatically done so that has to be part of your own lifestyle anything in your lifestyle do you re remind yourself to go to toilet do you remind yourself to go to sleep do you remind yourself to go to bath no right to eat also you don't have to remind because those are part of your life and you don't have to remind anything out of that so if those are like say whatever you have written those should be part of your life you should not be forgetting them that is automatically done and those should not be your uh those should not be in your to do list otherwise it will tax your mind unnecessarily it will stress you out so please don't do that so only put those things which will really require your your attention and time uh, which will which will take your time so that you can finish your work according to your credibility so it should build your credibility it should uh, prove that you are trustworthy it should also show people that you uh, you achieved deadlines in time right so those are the things you need to take care so i don't expect your to do list to be more than 10 at the best even even 10 is a huge thing i am asking you to outline only 3 but in the beginning it might not be possible so you can you can uh, do with hi abhinav hi harmeet uh sahid thank you for being here so any question just put your uh, question here so that i can take that on right so what i was discussing here is how big is your to do list right so if that is more than 10 in the in the beginning you might be having 10 because you are listing out everything but eventually it has to come down to less than 5 and uh, uh so harmeet right now you are able to see me but let me choose the camera now are you able to see me are you able to see me right, right now because i am not able to see myself right so if anybody can respond quickly then it will help me if you are online do please respond no
so <clears throat> that is the second part if anybody has any question about what should be the length ideal length of your to do list you can ask me question and then the third question we can deal with is how to put yourself in the effective quadrant what you should be doing ideal so when you are doing those three three essential thing of the day you are in a urgent and important quadrant steven pove has uh, four quadrants right let me show you what those quadrants are can you see these are the four quadrants of steven pove now if you are in the in the first quadrant which is urgent and important then these are the three uh, your three tasks should be from this but ideally and this should consume 20% of your time ideally 80% of your time should go to important but not urgent work if you are a strategist you should you should be in that quadrant quadrant 2 right and if you see quadrant 3 urgent but not important here it is saying it has to be delegated to a person in your team and quadrant 4 is about eliminate eliminating the task that is non essential right so these are the four things that you should know any questions out here so there is a study yesterday i was saying if you plan for 15 minutes every day then you will save 2 hours of your time so if you plan for 1 hour then you can save 8 hours of your time so in the 8 hours that you get if you want to save that then you need to plan for 1 hour so once you plan then there and this planning is about not urgent but very important you are preparing yourself for any eventuality plan a plan b plan c and in all this you are not the primary executor you are the person who is supervising all the implementation that is going on strategy you need to decide being a leader and the implementation execution needs to be done by your team and that team should have been trained by you so that you can delegate the task to various team members according to their strength and proficiency you get that so there is a leadership ability you need to develop to be able to understand the strength aptitude and skill skill set of your team members all of them will not be in the same category somebody will have proficiency in subject 1 somebody else will have proficiency in subject 2 and likewise for skills and aptitude now the combination of all these three will qualify one member to do a certain kind of task you should be able to do that you should be able to recognize that fact combination of skills aptitude and proficiency right these three you need to know how to categorize and what on what to train your team members 
so that you can delegate and thereby it is not getting the work done through them it is a training process for them to take over from you you will be graduating to the next level all the time right so you need to prepare them to take over from you so that you can move on in time do you get that any question on that so the main purpose of prioritization is not only to get your work done in a in a very efficient manner it is also to train your uh, team members and thereby prepare them for for taking up future leadership and also to give yourself time for planning i'll tell you a story uh some years back i got a uh, master who was doing executing a, a project in which 35000 households were involved and he had to execute that in 4 years time what does that mean every year he has to cater to about 9000 households so i asked him how could he do that so he asked me back what do you think that i did so then i said did you do 9000 each year he said yes but tell me how could i have i done 9000 from the first year first year i have to plan so i couldn't give that target to me first year so from the 8th month of the first year i started uh, reaching out to those households so first 8 months i did a plan a solid plan right and the last 6 months of the project is closing wrapping up so that means how much time he had 2 years and uh 10 months that means 24 into 24 plus 10 34 months he had effective now uh yes so in 34 months he had to cover 35000 that means 1000 a month so if he had to cover say like 100 uh, 100 households by each person each month then um, 1000 uh, will be covered by 10 people right so for hand holding and other support he has to hire another 10 so maximum 20 people would have been required for executing that project plan that that is what planning is in contrast i was handling about 500 households at that time and i already had a team of 6 people just handling 500 households you know according to that calculation i should have been doing at least 6000 right 6000 household uh 3000 at least so that i i could uh, multiply every year 6000 uh, 33 3000 so that um, in 5 years time i would have, i would have done 15000 it was not so only 500 can you see the insight that i got from him this is the power of planning as soon as you do this you actually optimize your resources it is not hundreds and thousands and uh, so many people in the team that you require you can manage with a small team with proper planning what to do what at which stage so if you do that you can prioritize what needs to be done this month this day right so that is that is how these are the three tricks 
with which you can prioritize somebody asked me if you don't have a team then what how can you delegate your work so why to focus on delegation if you are a one man team then <laughs> you 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 cannot think of delegation right you cannot think of delegation you need to outsource outsource your some of your work so that you can do the planning part perfectly and the strategy part perfectly and you can be the supervisor coordinator for that thing so if there is when you are a person just one team person then what you can do is the beneficiary can be your team people who get benefited by your work can be part of your team that is what i did at jharkhand i was handling a watershed pro- project and i was handling 43 villages and i was a single person for the entire project single person and i had to travel and do everything also what i did in 43 villages every village i chose three people right so how many people i had 43 into 3 so around 100 people i had who were my assistant and they were doing small small things that i wanted in the field to be done so i had assigned those kind of work to them and for that i had some expenses and for every task i had assigned like say their travel expenses their engagement expenses and their food expenses all this it doesn't come more than it didn't come more than say 200 rupees or so so i didn't exploit anybody and also could get my work done and when there was a major thing to be executed i actually handed it over to the locally mobilized groups self help groups and watershed associations there were seven watershed associations and these association were responsible to execute the watershed work so i mobilized that and in 43 villages every every watershed had about four to five villages and it was greatly done in a year time i actually could do, do so much that the soil conservation office which is the department which gave us the watershed project they were actually marveling as to how i was able to do so anybody came to visit that area that area was actually doing good in terms of watershed management and uh, there were other watersheds which were working from before before then this watershed project that i was handling and these people this anybody who visited the other ones other people coordinators of other watershed asked me to take the groups to their places so that people who are the visitors will be impressed by the crowd that we were able to mobilize so in in just less than a year i could mobilize 26 self help sorry self help groups and seven watershed association groups see this is very easy when you uh, take the beneficiaries as your uh, hr resource then actually it helps a lot it actually helps so much to get done and what was my priority every day every day my priority was to visit from morning 5 am to 12 noon was my field visit time and i had to uh, wake up <laughs> at 4:30 and take this and for the first half i had to visit any village of out of those 43 and i just went and talked to people about the progress of the work and whether what is their opinion in that that is what i did in the first half then i came back from 
p.m. to 5 p.m. I did the office work, the documentation work, or sometimes I went to the soil conservation office, the government department, which had given us that project to sit with them and tell them about what progress is being made. So that way, a lot of communication happened, a lot of work, work got done. A single person, 43 village, it was a 5,000 hectare watershed, and significant work was done. So now there is no excuse that you can't do. So it it went that way and how you can manage your time, your project and your tasks. We can discuss over a separate phone call, one to one phone call. For that you need to get into my LinkedIn group, special mid LinkedIn group of mid career professionals. Who, who who are looking for a breakthrough right so get to my uh, linkedin group for that and we can discuss it out there on the sixth day so today is the fourth day completed thank you for watching thank you for being here thank you see you tomorrow